Welcome to you all and congratulations on the film. Such a treat for fans. I'm not sure many of people here are fans of the TV series, so we'll have hands up and voices loud, please. Who would like to ask the first question? Front there, yes, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably bollocks, to be fair, but go on. And actually, if you were going to quote it in another interview... Oh, right, that's OK, then. Yeah, that American people, uh, they uh, cross the street to tell you that how much they love... I did say that. Show, ...and British people cross the street to say that they never watch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I think, um, I think people are going to love it. If you're a Downton fan, it looks so cinematic. Um, it's beautifully shot. Um, it's your typical sort of Downton storylines, the, you know, these pathos, this humour, drama, and a little mini, mini revolution slash revolt. So I think there's something for everyone. And if you like Downton, you're going to get a lot more of the same, but just slightly glitzier because the budget was bigger because it's a movie. Um, so, yeah. Great, thank you. Right. There, yep. Uh, question for you, Kevin. Great scene at the uh, royal dinner. I could barely watch it on squinty voice. Can you share your recollections of that scene? And why, perhaps as you were there in the room as well, you could also, uh, yeah, give us some input. Um, it, I, well, I knew it was uh, an important scene because uh, it was kind of the whole sort of downstairs story was building up to that moment, I suppose. Um, and, and so I was nervous, um, especially as I had to do that in front of everybody. Um, so it was, uh, I, I was, I was glad that it was over. Um, but uh, people were very supportive and um, uh, yeah, yeah, I had, a, I had a big drink at the end of the day. That's what I remember. <laughs> I can remember struggling not to be in hysterics the whole time that, he, that Kev was doing it. And I can remember Michael Engler, the director, shaking, laughing behind the monitor. It was very hard not to... It was hard to stay in character as a footman when, when Kev was doing that because it's just so hilarious. I'm so glad that it's... It feels like it's, it's, it's transferring onto the screen like that. So people are finding it really amazing. I modelled the uh, I, I modelled the sort of the bow stroke curtsy on Theresa May. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I did. I actually did. Uh, she, she, there's this famous photograph of her um, curtsying to uh, some royal, and uh, I, I just, it was such a preposterous curtsy. I thought I'm going to have that. So, great question. Thank you. Yes, there. And um, it's a question to everyone actually. So, to those countries who doesn't have a monarchy. Can you guys explain the fascination and the excitement uh, from that institution? Anyone like to speak to that? <laughs> Someone who hasn't spoken yet? <laughs> I think it's probably useful to, to remember that even you know, back then, the chances of a household being visited by the royal family were so, um, were so small. I mean, it would have been a once in a generation thing. So you can, you can imagine the excitement from everybody. Um, you, know, it, you know, there was no TV back then, so, uh, and there were no press photographs, so the, the chance of seeing royalty in person uh, would have been um, an extraordinary event. Uh, it, would never have, it would never have happened. They'd probably never have been to the, the, the house before. And so uh, you can imagine how not just the servants, but the whole household are tremendously excited by it, seeing them in person and getting the chance to serve them as well. Unfortunately, Rob didn't get that chance. <laughs> no, I was, I was off doing other things. <laughs> Thomas was finding him, him, himself. Yeah, yeah. I was there, but eye-rolling. Daisy did lots of eye-rolling <laughs> for that scene. I actually wondered if you could, any of you speak about the difference between filming the TV series. I mean, obviously, it was the same cast, but is there a sense of a grander scale when you're actually there? Yeah, there was, um, there was, a, there was <clears throat> like a pract practically, it felt like the shots were kind of um, constructed slightly differently. So it would be more of a, a ballet, like a choreographing to have like one scene run through all together, which I didn't think we'd have before. Like most of the time downstairs, it's, like st it's quite fast and frenetic. And then um, the upstairs scenes would be kind of quite still, but this one felt like much more of a ballet, like a dance. And uh, I just felt like with the DOP, Ben Smithard, that he just kind of raised the bar with what they were, were trying to achieve cinematically. 
And the lighting was more complicated and fabulous, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And, and weirdly, going back to the, like the kitchen set, which we know every inch of and have spent hours and hours on, as soon as you walked on, you thought, oh, there's something weird here. And it was just slightly bigger. I mean, that's not a fascinating <laughs> fact, but it's just what it was. It was they had more room for the, for the equipment. But otherwise, it felt very similar to going, it was like going home and the place that we'd spend a lot of time in, really. But we did have, we had extra rooms. So rooms oh, yeah, that yeah. in the TV show would only be mentioned could actually exist with a film budget. Mm. So we were all really excited on our first day because we were in the wine the cellar. Wine cellar yeah. And we'd never actually had a wine cellar. We'd just heard mention of it. Mm. So they could build things that we could only ever mention before. So that was nice. And um, we've split you up, I'm sorry, but um, Leslie and Sophie, I mean, your characters have had a lovely relationship over the years. How do you feel that sort of developed as time's gone on? Well, I think it, what I notice is that Madame here has got a bit more gobby. Uh, she's got <laughs> in, in the olden days, it was me that was definitely the dominant character. But actually, it's because there's a kind of a mother and daughter vibe to it, just as happens in life, I think what you see, and particularly in the film, really, is that things are swapping around a little bit and she's becoming much more um, forthright with Mrs. Patmore, which would never have happened in the olden days. And it's a bit like it can happen with your own mother. You, you start being more um, outspoken and, and the, dyn the dynamic changes and it, and it has with this relationship, I think. Yeah, it's changed a lot. We, we, we seem more, in some scenes now, they seem almost equals, even though Patmore will always be the boss. Yeah. But they sort of got this amazing friendship now it's not so it's not so terrifying as it no. was when we first no. met and you just used to shout at me all the time <laughs> it's come such a long way and we had the teenage phase where <laughs> I didn't want to listen to anything she said a lot of eye rolling yeah yeah and now I I think Daisy looks out for Mrs Patmore in the same way that you look out for Daisy yeah she might have got a little bit more fragile in some ways and you yeah there's yeah I remember when you cried because you didn't want me to leave I do so Mrs. Patmore's become the, the, the mum that gives her a guilt trip. She won't let Daisy leave. <laughs> no, that, that's I think true. that's why Daisy's still there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Robert, you sort of alluded to your storyline in this, which is very interesting. Without spoilers, um, talk to us a little bit about the journey your character's gone on to get here. Uh, yeah, well, um, as Kevin put before, he, he misses all the royal pomp and circumstance because when it's first announced that the royal family are coming to visit, Thomas is the actual butler at Downton Abbey, but it becomes apparent that he may be slightly out of his depth, and I think it's something that the family noticed, the Crawley family noticed, so they bring Carson back. I was going to say from the dead, but that's a wrong choice of words. Um, <laughs> they dust off Car Carson and bring him out of retirement um, to oversee the royal visit, so you can imagine the kind of guy Thomas is. He's not thrilled by this. He feels he's been usurped and there's it's a, a vote of no confidence in him so he sort of steps himself down with his lordship um which is quite a bold thing to do because he's quite um acerbic with him in that scene um, yeah. and you know he could have easily been fired but it, he sets himself down for the duration of the royal visit and goes off on, on other adventures shall we say but because of that series of events he ends up somewhere where he doesn't want to be in a whole world of pain and i can't really say much more than that because I don't know if I'm allowed to but <laughs> it's, it's quite good it's quite good I think I did okay in it you did, you did. You very, did. Good. very good thank you guys <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael talk to me about some of the most enjoyable scenes to film in this one anything stand out perhaps something that you wouldn't have had in the TV series you know because the film gives you an opportunity doesn't it to... well uh, one, one uh, because there's the conflict with the new downstairs um, staff coming in um, we had scenes with David Haig, and he was just, I mean, I was so thrilled that he's joined the cast for this film, and he was just so brilliant time and time again. And we, I wasn't doing anything in the scene, I was just kind of watching and standing there in my livery, but I was just watching him go again and again and just be brilliant, and uh, that was really enjoyable. And, and that was the same for a lot of the, the new cast that have come in, just this absolute treat just to see um, them join in. And, well, everyone talks about it being like a family and a wonderful reunion. And how does it? Um, are you very? I'm sure you are very welcoming to new people coming in. But how does that dynamic work? Anyone speak to that? Well, I think the people who came in did say they felt 
relaxed welcome. and welcome, yeah. which mm -hmm. was which was what we've always tried to do as a cast, haven't we? We, we have. And because it's hard to walk into something that's established anyway, and when it's a, a big a big deal, it's even worse. And mm -hmm. the last thing you want is anybody to feel un unconfident. Yes. And they weren't, and they were great. We, we greatly mm -hmm. admired what all of them did. I mean, they're all mm -hmm. terrific. We, we, Kevin and Sophie and I, spent a day with Mark Addy. Oh. Um, oh, so and good. he's just, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's awesome. wonderful. He's, he's hilarious. Future, we've got a big future. <laughs> 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 but it was an honour for us to have him there, you know. I mean, he's, he's top, top dollar. So, um, so that was great. But I don't think he looked nervous. He, he, had, he had a good day, didn't and he? And that's hard going... I think he was only with us for a, a One day. One day, yeah. We went up to Beamish in the northeast because there's a sort of proper period village there. and So we had a good jolly up there, didn't we? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's hard to go in for one day. It's really hard. But he was brilliant. Sometimes I'm more nervous... Uh than the um, guest stars because David Aig's a bit of a legend you know yeah. what I mean yeah. so he's done Talking Heads Alan Bennett and you see all the work he's done and yeah. the fact that he's walking into our little show is, is incredibly flattering but you're like whoa this is like you know he's a top level actor yeah. so he's great to sit back and watch and learn from and he was yeah. a yeah. Lov lovely guy you know yeah. what I mean yeah well, he had to be, really, because there's more of us than there is of him. So <laughs> we could turn. It might seem nice, but we could turn at any time. <laughs> and the script has so many great fun ideas that kind of make it cinematic as well as very, very Downton. Did anyone, any of you want to speak to how you felt when you read it and sort of thought, OK, yeah, this is really going to work? Uh, well, there were actually a lot of moments. So yeah. I remember reading the script and feeling like, oh, I can't wait to do that. Um, can't wait to get involved in the kind of coup downstairs. Our first day on set was all of us together in the wine yeah. cellar, so it was yeah. kind of, and that was one of the most kind of fun, exciting scenes we were pitching in. Um, it was scary as well because you know we, we there'd been a break of three years, and I I, I remember speaking to Joe Froggart uh, do, do, while we were rehearsing it, and we, the, the, there were all of us downstairs in that wine cellar and. You could see that there were nerves because we were. We, it's very rare for actors to come back to a role after a three-year gap, and um, and so I, I personally was nervous, and I know Joe was nervous. Just you know, is this is this how I'm meant to sound? You know, is this how I look? Um, and it's a much anticipated movie, isn't it? Yeah, which yeah. adds so a lot of pressure there to were, it. There were a lot of nerves. Um, yeah, and it, as I said, it's very rare for there to be a sort of a, a, a gap like that. Uh, so it was, um, yeah. It was quite clever of them to schedule the big scene first because it, yeah. it got the camaraderie back mm. up and threw us yeah. all back together rather than being isolated and shot separately and then coming together. So I thought. We started a book move. club on that day, didn't we? Yeah. We did. It was the word. Then, one book. And then we never managed to meet again to, to talk about it. But we all read yeah. the book. We all read one book, liked the book. <laughs> the worst book club ever. We read we one were. book. <laughs> what and book we did never you read? spoke about it. <laughs> and we never spoke about it. <laughs> we this is going to hurt. Should we talk about it now? This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. Give them the title of the book, Michael. This is going to hurt, is it? Yes, that's the one. Okay. Anyone read it? Oh, no. forget it. <laughs> <laughs> it's about an NHS this, doctor. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt, yeah. So it's great. It was, a, it was a number one bestseller, but yeah. obviously not in this room. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Question at the front here. Yes, thank you. No. What about coming back? Yeah, did you film? Oh, no, no, no. I did no, no, I, 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 I mean, it's... I don't think anybody didn't want we to have do such, it. We have such fun doing it. I just don't know why you, you yeah. wouldn't no. do it. Um, you know, yeah. yeah, I only came in for the last two, so I didn't really want it to stop when it stopped. So. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we all came back for Michael, really. <laughs> <laughs> He'd only had two series, just and you know, we go. wanted to give him a good run. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we'll be back for five movies. <laughs> <laughs> we want to beat the um, Police Academy franchise. That's our uh, target. Is that five? But no, I think it's like eight now. <laughs> Send the question in the front here. Yep. No, no, no. We you can bake. Yeah, we, we're really good at pretending to cook. Yeah, we got good at that. We've mastered a lot of things. Yeah, Leslie does really good seasoning and tasting. And shouting. And I, I started shouting as well. I think yeah. that's quite a good one. Shouting at other people in the kitchen. 
We've seen people do that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we do. We're the, terrible. The prop work in that kitchen is second to none with these two, honestly. It's proper choreography, isn't it? We don't know what we're saying or what our faces are doing. All we care about is... Did I put that on. pan down on that yeah. line? It was a crash course in... Con- um, what's the word? Continuity. Being, yeah, yes. yeah, continuity. Continuity. Um, continuity. Um, yeah, you give these any prop and they can work with it. Flower sifters, rollers... <laughs> Yeah. Strainers, they can do the lot. So no, we're not really either of us. Um, although I'm going to cooking classes now, which is new. Oh. Oh. Vegan, actually. Fair yeah. play. I'm not very pat, Ma. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Had a question over there, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have played um, Lady Edith. <laughs> yeah. I sort of feel that Molesley is sort of the equivalent downstairs of Lady Edith, sort of overlooked and um, rather hapless, and uh, <laughs> but has a happy ending. Anyone else? Mrs. Patmore gets quite good one-liners. I think she's a bit of a dowager. I know, but I wouldn't presume to say that because it's your day, Maggie, isn't no, it? No, but you, I do think you get some good I do, I put down. Do yeah, I do. Do you Is think it? you're a better actor than day, Maggie? I think, I, think, I think no, and we'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thank you. This is question. When you had the call for the, for the movie, was the script already done or you could just talk? No, it was done. That doesn't happen. No, no. no it's, it's it was done and you don't change the words. Slard fellows. It's all good. Oscar winner, <laughs> Emmy winner, BAFTA winner. Yeah, yeah. you just get on with it. Because, it, you know, it's usually it. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I think he's got a good future. You're corrected if you don't get it right, so that's how it is. But it, you can imagine how long it... You know, it, it's difficult to get 20-odd <clears throat> actors back together again after, you know, everybody goes their separate ways after six years. And so um, it took a while to sort of get everybody back together and to get the script ready and to get the locations ready and uh, so you, you can understand the, the time scale involved. And also to give that many people something you know yeah. that's you've only got a finite amount of time in a TV series you can spread it out and give somebody a storyline one episode but you haven't got the luxury of that so it's a bit masterly really that he's actually managed to make sure that everybody features in one way yeah. or another and considering as well the guest artists coming in they, yeah. they've got really good parts as well so they he's have. got to throw that into the mix because yeah. you know they're not they wouldn't have come if there wasn't something decent for them no um so yeah it's, it is quite a skill to do that yeah gentleman at the front there uh, how was working with dane Smith in this time because he's uh, very I think you get a um, you get a clue to Maggie in the fact that you don't have to call her Dame. She just wants to be called Maggie yeah. because she's that an actor that came through the repertory system. So she's been there, done it the hard way. Um, so there's no airs or graces about her, and she is genuinely part of the ensemble. And that's why you'll see her at read throughs as well, despite her winning multiple Oscars and you know Golden Globes and all the rest of it. She just loves to be part of the ensemble. So. I find her anyway. She's incredibly approach, approachable. In fact, she was in one of my skits for charity, Down to Wars <laughs> 2, brandishing a light, lightsaber with that. Penelope Wilton. If you haven't seen it, get on YouTube and check it because it happened. So, you know, it's a day... work. And, yeah, Michael did the... He was the DOP on it. A bit, <laughs> a bit shaky, but, you know, we'll let him off. He was his first job. Yeah. Um, but the fact that she... And I'm, and I'm not joking, by the way. Um, the fact that she brandished my son's lightsaber while Michael was filming it on my iPhone to go on YouTube shows that she is part of the ensemble and up for game for anything really she's class mm. her acting's a bit mm, but you know <laughs> she'll come on she's she, very she, good at banana grams yeah, yeah, yeah. she always wins that yeah. sorry could someone else should say something as well I'll hug that bit okay, else? Don't. No. <laughs> you summed it up beautifully I think any other questions yes We've never had that's that a before. a belsing question. Good question. We've never, never had, had that, that question. Over to you, Sophie. Well, you're northern as well. I am. Um, well, we can't... We're all northern apart from Michael. Well, North London, I'm... <laughs> get out. Get off the stage. <laughs> you imposter. <laughs> Michael counts me. 
Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question, but we can't answer it without sounding incredibly... Uh, yeah, we'll get into a whole regionalist argument yeah. there. Um, there are some that would say that the further north you go in the country, that it might get slightly friendlier. I just think because there's <laughs> less people there. And any big city like London, they're going to be... It might be slightly... Got to watch what I say. No, I just think you in not. America, for example, <laughs> people in the country might say people from New York are a bit more closed off. And some might say it could be similar <laughs> in another country. But I have no are you saying that comment on that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there are some <laughs> that allegedly might say that. But I wouldn't want to possibly comment. We never actually get to go up north. That's one of the things that... Shocked. Except we did. We did this year. This but time, but not normally. No, I we never did. Yeah, I know, I went, went to, to my hometown. In the yeah. film, we got to travel a bit, but usually we just talk Very about... Very southern based. Yeah, we're always I in think London. the correct answer is all people in this country from all regions are all the exact same level of niceness. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Press trained. <laughs> Very diplomatic, thank you. Um, time for one or two last questions, if anyone else has got it. <laughs> oh, God, they've run out of questions. Yeah. How embarrassing. Oh, no. let's, I've let's... got a question for the cast. Go on. How has Downton changed your life? Oh, we always <laughs> Don't have to answer that. A lot. A lot. Well, I mean, the fans alone must be a huge experience. I mean, does it happen hourly when you, or daily, every minute like when you're well, out on the funny. street. I was at Highclere yesterday doing an interview and, the, and they were having a dressing up day so a lot of people came dressed up as characters from Downton a lot of them, well they were from all over the world but a lot of Americans and they'd come a long way for this event and they were I don't, they're practically always lovely, I don't think I've ever really had anything unpleasant at all um, but there was a, one lady cried I mean, on me, but she just got overwhelmed. And another one was looking a little bit wide-eyed. And Ian, over there, my lovely friend and hairdresser, said to me, do you know something? Do you realise where the word fan comes from? I said, no, I've never thought about it. And he said, fanatic. And I went, oh. Because sometimes you do see a wild-eyed look. And you go, oh, that's what that is. That's, that's somebody who's got quite excited. And that's what I saw yesterday quite a lot. Well, there's a lot for the fans in this movie, and thank you all so much for joining <laughs> us today. Thank you. Thank you. Best of the movie. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!